Unfortunately, I think some people have taken this the wrong way. A while ago, I did a video on archaic segments, ancient DNA, and matches that we have with them. Unfortunately, I think some people have taken this the wrong way. And that is they've gone in and they've looked at the data there and they've said, oh, well, I'm related to this Siberian person or I'm related to Kennewick man. Yeah, from a human standpoint and the fact that you're a modern human, you probably are related to them. They probably aren't your ancestor. But what I want to look at specifically is these archaic segments in relation to other videos that I've done about small segments. When we are looking at archaic segments, we have to ask is whether or not these matches are real or not. Another way to say that is, do I share DNA with these ancient humans? Well, the DNA that all humans have in common, yes, we share that, but, do we share DNA from this common ancestor with these ancient segments? Another way to say this is archaic segments are almost always small segments. So whenever we're using, whenever we're looking at these archaic segments, we have to have what we've learned about small segments in mind. Let me show you an example here. And this is me versus F999935. And you can go on to Jedmatch and compare yourself to the same person. Um, it is also labeled as Ust Ishim Siberia from about 45,000 years ago. Now you may be thinking, wow, that is pretty ancient. I didn't realize that we could do matching segments that old. Well, when you look at the archaic segments tool, you'll notice that you have to go down well below seven centimorgans to even get any kind of matches. In my case, I have a few matches that are just above three centimorgans, one that's almost four centimorgans, but there's nothing that is in the five centimorgan range. So using the one-to-one -one tool, we can look at above three centimorgan matches. And when I look at above three centimorgan matches, I have nine different segments that I match with this person. So now I need to go and I need to find out whether or not these are real matches or whether they are false matches. If you've seen any of my other videos about small segments, you know that I have DNA from my mom and my dad. And so if anybody matches me, they should match either my mom or dad if it is a real match. If it's not a real match, then they don't match one of those. So looking at my dad, only one of these nine segments actually matches my dad. Okay, so the rest must match my mom, right? No, only one other segment matches my mom. So already I can eliminate seven segments. I can say right off the bat, all seven of these segments in purple are false segments. Seven out of nine is roughly 70%, um, I'd have to do the math, 77%, something like that, which is the vast majority of those segments are false. And I know that just by comparing it with my dad and my mom. So I have seven out of nine false matches on those segments, which makes me a little bit leery about those other two. And it certainly makes me leery about anything that is below that three centimorgans. But if you've seen other videos, you will also know not only do I have my mom and my dad's DNA, I have my dad's parents' DNA, my paternal grandma and grandpa. So I can take the segment that matches my dad and I can compare it to my grandpa and grandma. If it matches one of them, well, then I've got some pretty good idea that, okay, that might be a real match on that segment. But guess what? You'll notice I've crossed off that blue segment. It did not match my paternal grandparents at all, which means it's a false segment. Now, there's probably some different ways as far as algorithms that that false segment showed up being a match to my dad and to me, but in the end, it doesn't match my grandparents, so it is a false segment. 
And if you happen to have DNA from your parents and your grandparents, you can actually do these tests yourself to see how much of this DNA might possibly be real. So in this case, me against this 45,000 year old ancient DNA, one possible segment out of nine might be a matching small segment. And I only say that because I don't have my maternal grandparents' DNA to do a check on that side. At three centimorgans, one out of nine, that's 11%, is not that great. And remember, the smaller the segment is, the less likely it is that it's going to be a true segment. So, should you be using the segments that you find on the archaic DNA as a representation of actual matches? No, you shouldn't. Because one, they're all small segments. And two, as with small segments and what I've shown you today, most all of those segments are going to be false, if not all of them. And it's simply because as we get down to smaller and smaller segments of DNA, it's a much higher probability that we just match by chance because we share so much DNA in common as humans. Now, if you'd like to see some of the videos about small segments, you can start with this video up at the top here. But if you want to learn something else about DNA, then try this video down below.